Don't be intimidated, chase your dream no matter how big it is because when I was a kid, I would have never thought I would be here at NBAA one and just to do what I do. Like that's insane to me. I'm not doing anything unusual, I'm just being me. They're paying me to be me. I've been told no more times than I can remember, but I didn't stop. If I did stop, I wouldn't be here. Keep dreaming big, don't stop, keep going after your goals no matter what. So part of the reason why I love coming to things like the NBAA conventions, you know, you'd never know who you're going to meet. And while we were sitting there filming one of our interviews, we met this guy, Anthony Oshinuga, who was just poking around in his flight suit and like, hey, what's up with the camera? What's going on with the camera? And we got the sense like he might actually have something interesting to say. So we immediately just mic'd him up and had a conversation with him. And it's, again, just these really cool inspirational stories about someone that at five years old caught the bug and kind of, you know, made that, made that his life, made that dream come true. So just thought it was really cool to kind of get something that was a little bit different from what we normally do. Hey, Nick Tarasio here with Anthony Oshinuga. And Anthony, you're, let me see if I get this right, you're an air race pilot, is that right? That's correct, yeah. So uh, I do three types of flying. So I do air show, um, air racing, and comp competition aerobatics flying. And how did you get into that? Because I feel like that's the dream for most pilots, really. Yeah, I don't know, man. I got lucky. It just one thing happened after another. Um, I was a young kid at an airport. My dad took me to an airport. We watched airplanes fly over the car and land, and I was like, OK. I want to start flying. From that point, we uh, got my license, got my commercial license, got my I-4, uh, got my private pilot's license. And then from that point, um, I was lucky enough to meet an individual who took me up for an airbag flight. And that's kind of where everything changed in 2010. So I've heard a lot that it's, uh, you really got to self-fund your start in this game, that it's a, it's, it's a long build-up process before you get there. Yeah, that's absolutely right, man. I, I don't know. I, like I said, I'm blessed. I got lucky. I don't know how I even got to this point. I'm sponsored by Epic Fuels here, um, and they provide me with all the gas I need to help me to get to my goals and achieve my goals. But uh, essentially, it's just you just got to keep digging and be passionate and go after it. You sh when you're doing those things, people kind of see that energy. They're like, you know what? We're going to help you out some way, some, somehow. And that's kind of what happened to me. Now, does anybody in your family think you're out of your mind? Uh, my mom does, of course. <laughs> She's like, son, please be safe. I'm like, mom, always. Yeah, so yeah, I'm the only um, pilot in my whole family. So my mom, my dad, my grandma, every, every, no one is a pilot in my whole generation lineage, so it's just me. Do they ever ask why you weren't just a commuter pilot or something? They ask, they ask why, why wasn't I just a teacher? I was like, that's boring. <laughs> and yeah, they say that too. And I say to my parents, once you go upside down, it's different because when you're flying passengers in the back when they're drinking coffee you only can do like a 10 degree bank to the left or right or the coffee's gonna you know slide off the table whereas you know I love to fly upside down to my shows halfway there I'm upside down and I love flying like that I don't know I don't know what it is but so I'm gonna ask a question that I've never asked another race pilot aerobatics pilot now you're pretty much constantly filled with adrenaline, I imagine, right? Yeah, 100%. Now, in the rest of your life, like I don't know, your dating life or something like that, how does that affect that? How does it affect like every other part it, of your it's, life? It's really, really difficult and that's a really good question. Because usually when I meet, um, if I'm dating someone, I mean, they need to be a, they need to be a motorcycle rider or like a pilot. They gotta do something that's, that keeps me and keeps my brain firing. Because if not, then I get a little bored. I'm like, okay, well, how about we go for a flight in my airplane so I can keep this thing going, keep stimulated. <laughs> so like, you know, instead of like a typical candlelit dinner, what's like the ideal dinner date out? Um, okay, I'll, I'll be candid. It'll be, it would have to be like jumping in an airplane, flying to Catalina, are you, are you familiar with California? Course, yeah. Flying to Catalina, landing, grab our camping gear out of the airplane, go down to the beach, camp on the sand, s'mores, the whole nine. Next morning, jump back in the airplane, fly back home. That'd be a, that'd be a nice that'd be a nice date for me. Are you currently single? Absolutely. Eligible bachelor right here, <laughs> airplane rides included. <laughs> it's hard to top. Yeah. You're ruining it for the rest of us. I'm you know sorry. That, right? I know. I'm just being me. So, but you know, I'm, just, I'm joining myself and having fun doing it. What was the first moment that you remember? Like, as you said, at five. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. What was that moment? It was the, so my father. Um, who, so my, my my dad is Nigerian. My mom's Nigerian. I was born in Austin, Texas. So. He was going to school in, in Texas and he had a friend who was a pilot. He told my father to drive his car and park it at the approach end of the runway and turn it around. So my dad's friend and other pilots in the pattern flew right over the car and landed. I was, I was sitting in my dad's lap eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I dropped that sandwich because I thought that airplane was going to hit the car, but I will never forget that moment. And that's the moment I was like, I was like, Dad, that's, that's kind of what I want to do. Let's, let's, how do we get that started? Since you're already living many pilots' dream job as it is, what's the dream from here for you? What comes next? 
So I love challenges. And I think that uh, being competitive on the Red Bull platform and racing Red Bull, I think it's probably the most competitive line you can probably face. So my, my goal, I think my next goal is to, is to, become, to become a sponsored Red Bull athlete and then from there get training by a mentor who is in the Red Bull organization and then, and then have the opportunity to race the Red Bull. In regards to you know, never letting uh, no stop you, how do I get a ride with you in one of your planes? Oh, anytime. If you're in California, Temecula, California, uh, come out. We'll take you up. No problem. Awesome. Well, thank you again hey, so much. You're welcome. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. The biggest thing that comes out of my talk with him is just the reminder that if this is really something you want to do, I think a lot of people make excuses for why they can't have aviation in their life, but they know they've always wanted it since they were five years old. So really talking to him, you realize there's really no excuse. If you want it, you can make it happen. You just, just ignore all the no's.